This video is brought to you by Adorama.com. We start looking at the 30 yard transformer at 3x. Note that when we go from 3 to 12, its maximum magnification, that the eye box changed a little bit. That's going to be a reoccurring topic throughout this entire video. Just look at how sharp it is, though. This thing focuses really, really well, all things considered. From there, we're going to bump it up to about 400 yards. And in the center of the crosshairs, you're going to note a steel door. Now, if that is a standard steel door, which I would imagine it would be, that's about 80 inches tall. It gives you a sense of scale, even if you can't see all of it. And again, razor sharp, really high contrast on those bricks and the greens on, on the tree. Starting at 12x, we're focusing the 30 yard power cables, changing the parallax out to about 200 yards where those trees are. And then finally on that power tower in the back, which is roughly 700 yards. Again, very high definition, all things considered for a $107 scope. Back to 3x to give you an example of how the windage and elevation turrets move and how that shadow on the inside moves in conjunction with them. That's probably due to the fact that this is a 1 inch tube, 3 to 12x, and it's only $107. There's not much you could really expect for it. But overall, it seems pretty solid and a minor gripe on this scope's behalf. You're looking at a bench rest target for 22LR at 50 yards. If I remember correctly, those green circles are roughly 2 inches in diameter. A main concern of mine during the unboxing was how the parallax adjustment felt, but once I started using it more and more, it started feeling better and better, so it really wasn't an issue. My friend was shooting this target with his 22LR, and just look at how sharp it is. Contrast is good, brightness is good, colors are great, it's very impressive. Now if you note, on the bottom left of the white paper target, my friend is shooting the group for me real quick, just so you can have a visual representation of if you can even call your shots. And very clearly, you can. A very impressive performance by my perspective. Granted, the iBox changes from 3 to 12x, but at 3x, it is very, very big. BSA claims, I believe, 4 inches of eye relief at 3x, and I'd have to say I believe it. There's only a minor amount of fish eyeing at 3x as well, which is pretty impressive. Bumping up to 6x, you'll see that the iBox is still pretty wide. Also, take a note of how bright it is. The camera's fixed with their shutter speed and f-stop, so that if it was to change brightness through the scope, you'd notice it. At 9x, things get a little bit tighter, but the brightness is still there, and so is the contrast. And here at 12x, or maximum magnification, the eye box is still pretty good, very similar to the 9x. In my opinion, still more than usable for most applications. The stone building is about 70 yards away, give or take, and it's probably about 6 to 7 feet tall. Give you a sense of scale to begin with. Now, in an environment like this, the reticle will get lost in darker areas. However, there's still enough contrast to actually be able to pick it up. Now, at this point, I kept walking up the trail until I heard this very loud chipping noise. To my surprise, I noticed that there were chipmunks everywhere, and I figured it would be a great opportunity to try to get myself on target with one of these little suckers. It's hard enough just being able to see a chipmunk in the wild, but let alone try to set up a scope and a camera on one is impossible. Except for this little guy who decided he was going to be part of the photo shoot. Pew! Oh. Now for the moment of truth. How does this scope track? Now this is very, very, very important because this is a BDC turret, not a BDC reticle. So every time that you make an adjustment on your elevation knob, it better track up and down pretty good or else it's going to throw your shot off. And lo and behold, elevation's pretty good. With the exception at the very end, there's a little bit of take up, probably about two or three clicks. However, not the same can be said for the windage. Take a note that we only move over about two mils left. That's interesting. Let's go over, we're at minus three. And now we just and crested then. just over three mils. It stops, but yet it still keeps spinning. There's bound to be a weak link somewhere, and I think I just found it. That's about point, point one of click off. Whoa! 
this was not me futzing with the elevation and the windage at the same time. That was solely the windage. Now, remember how we went two and then three mils? Now we're going almost four mils left. And listen to the clicks. Go back to that if you can. And just realize that even though the reticle stopped moving. Zero. All right, not too bad. The clicks are still happening. So I'm still turning the turret. Whoa. Don't make a windage change. This is my biggest fear was having these turrets be the weak link because they're the most important part of the entire scope. The glass is extremely sharp here though. Everything's in great focus. So you're getting, you're getting actually surprisingly good quality glass for sure. Great glass for sure, but really weird windage. Elevation was doing great as long as you didn't go below zero, which I can understand because I think it was at the end of its range, but that's basically it. And to wrap this up in a nice pretty bow, what do I think about this? It's actually pretty damn good for $107. The controls on it are usable, workable, especially the adjustable parallax. It's great. Magnification ring is good. And with the exception of the windage going too far to one extreme or the next, it is fine. I'm painfully impressed with how good the glass is on this. If you're going from 3 to 12, you will note that it, the eye box shifts a little bit. But the glass clarity is surprisingly good. And there's very little chromatic aberration, all things considered. In this particular case, if you're looking for a 17 HMR specific rifle scope on a budget, look no further. This is fantastic. A huge thank you to Adorama.com for sending this over for a review. If you'd like to buy this, check out the link in the description. And again, thank you so very much for watching. See you again next time.